Right, so the Portuguese guy has asked me to give a few words on why I like DMR pedals so much. I've been buying them for years now. Uh, so here we go. This is Ireland, as you can see, in May. And it's only a few degrees warmer than it was in the winter. And in fact, it's like this right across the British Isles. I'm from Wales and Wales is exactly the same. Scotland, we've just come back from doing the NC500 and it was lashing down with rain and it was particularly cold up in the north. England is the same. However, if you're thinking of doing a tour of the UK at all, then please bear in mind that you can have sun over in Cornwall and on the same day you can have snow up in Scotland. So for this reason, I like DMR pedals. They're strong, they can be very versatile, as I'll explain in a short while. They're good value for money and they give me the bling factor in colour. They're also very light and they're very, very comfortable. And in bike packing and touring on long distances, this is exactly what you want. You don't want your pedals snapping or breaking or get cheap plastic ones, because if you find yourself out in the middle of nowhere, which quite frequently all of us bike packers and tourers do, you may be miles and miles and miles and kilometers away from any bike shop that may even sell pedals, a decent set of pedals. Uh, and for this reason, it's imperative to have really good quality footwear and pedals. It's all down to personal preference and preference comes with experience. As you go on in your bikepacking or touring careers, you'll find things that actually work for you and things that don't, that may work for many, many other people. What I don't want you to do is get hung up on clipless or flat pedals. Clipless were actually designed in 1984 and it was based on the skis. And they said that it would be more ergonomical, which for professional cyclists it actually is. But for amateur cyclists, many don't actually use the right technique on the upward stroke. So even though it keeps their cadence, when they actually come up, their foot is slipping all around and they're not using it properly. But this is actually open to debate in many, many circles. I'm not gonna discuss it here. But what I don't want you to do is get really hung up on clipless. I've had people come past me and go, oh, you're rising a platform as if I'm, I'm mud. And that is simply not the case. I've been cycling for 30 years. I can cycle in clipless. It's just a lot of the time I use pedals and clips for what I need it for. So when you're bike packing and touring, it's worth bearing in mind that space is a constraint. Now I'm not about to go and use a three bolt clipless and then take loads of other shoes. For me, I like the two bolt clipless shoes, such as here, I've actually got the Shimano's that I use um, and they're, they're two bolt and they actually fit into the Versas, which DMR do. Or I've got also the 510s, which are the two bolt. And the beauty with these is I can wear them with trousers or jeans or whatever I've got, and they are a pair of shoes. Normally I just take a pair of Tevas if it's somewhere very hot and I've got a pair of shorts on. But I don't want to be taking any more shoes than what is necessary. And for me, these do the bomb. I can go to, to town, I can wear these with trousers, and I'm sorted. One thing I don't want to do is have a position where I'm walking across the palazzo in a nice flowy dress, and I'm walking like a duck. It just doesn't work, and you have to think about that. So when I'm touring, I do like to, work, to use actually a flat platform with studs. One of the reasons is that you're doing so many different things when you're touring. You are going uphill, you're going downhill. You are going through towns. Urban cycling is dangerous. As I found out when I went to Spain and somebody actually tried to run me off the road, they didn't, they failed to stop at a junction even though they saw me and pushed me onto two lanes of traffic. Had the two lanes of traffic, the drivers in there not seen what happened, then I would have ultimately been seriously injured or dead. And in that respect, you need to get your feet off the pedals very, very quick. We've all done it. I've used clipless, I've gone through town, I've stopped at traffic lights and I failed to get my foot out of the clip and I've actually fallen sideways, much to the amusement of everybody else. So clipless is very good if you're actually bike packing and you need to go uphill in a low gear. You can actually do a lot of stuff on there, but the main problem with wearing clipless when you're off-road is that mud can get shunted between the foot and the pedal. 
and in slippery and wet conditions, you don't want your foot to go all over the place. Going downhill, I actually tend to use the platform. I just flick the versa over, I use the platform and use the studs in there and I can clear the mud out from the clipless. So for me, I actually prefer versas to anything else. And well, well done DMR for putting these versas out. So this is the V12s. I love the V12s. You can see they've got the studs in there. It's got broad platform there. And I think these come in at uh, 430 grams and they're around 60 pounds sterling. Um, you can get the magnesium ones and they are actually uh, 350 grams. Now the price range is a little bit more. I think they're just over a hundred pounds sterling. Um, but for those that are very environmentally conscious, they, they are the bomb. But these are the ones that I use on my touring bike. And as you can see, the color is superb. They're really, really sturdy. There's no, there's no breakage in those. I absolutely love them. All right, this is Dolly. And Dolly has got to be between 22 and 25 years old. She is an excellent mountain bike. I've used her pretty much every single day that I have ever had her. And this bodes well for the Versas. This is what the Versa pedals are all about. These ones come in, I think they're four, four, five grams. And you can see actually on them, this is the platform with the pins that I use going downhill. And these are the clip pins that I use uphill. They've even got grind up here and bomb down on each side. And the beauty with this and with this bike is this bike gets used for everything. I've done a very famous uh, bike pack with the Barrow Way where it was totally full of mud and this bike literally sliced through the mud like butter. Um, she's used for commuting. She is used for even getting the pints of milk that you need, the litres of milk. So the Versas are what they do, say on the can, they do absolutely everything. And you can see this is well worn uh, from DMR. Absolutely love the Versas. If I had my way, I'd have the Versas all the time. Um, but obviously we're not sponsored by any person when we do this channel. These are things that we've actually bought. And it's worth bearing in mind that they do a magnesium uh, Volt SL, which I think comes in at 332 grams, but is very, very pricey, but extremely light, extremely robust. And for me, I have to say, DMR, well done. So overall, I don't think I'm ever gonna deviate from DMR. The price is right, the color is superb. They've got the strength and sturdiness that I want. I have peace of mind when I go for my many long bike packing and touring adventures. So guys at DMR, if you ever wanna throw the Volt or the Versus my way, I'd be happy to try them out. But for now, you've got a loyal customer. Great work, DMR.